it's time to turn the world of lasering from black and white into colour. Earlier in the year I did a review of my first ever fibre laser, the Commarker B4 30W. Now I highlighted three simple reasons why fibre lasers are awesome. First, they will engrave and cut metal. Two, they are low maintenance. And three, they work at phenomenal speeds. And I genuinely had so much fun using that laser. I still have it right here. But now, a few months later, I also have the 60 watt MOPA version. Now, I didn't want to just rehash the same type of projects and cover the same detail. So what I'm going to do differently in this video is talk about the differences between this version and the other version that I have. I'm gonna talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of having a MOPA laser and also the things that I have done differently now having a little bit more experience of fiber lasers. So let's dive in and cover off the most obvious things, the differences between the 60 watt MOPA and the 30 watt original. So the obvious difference between them is the power rating with my previous one being 30 watt and this one being 60 watt. Now it really is as simple as that sounds. This one is double the power of the previous one that I had. Now ultimately what that means is things are just going to get done even quicker. So for example, one of the projects I did in the previous video was a scorpion coin. I think this took around 400 passes over the course of around four hours. Now with this version, the 60 watt, it literally took half the amount of passes and half the amount of time. Now, you'll probably be purchasing one of these to try and help start a small business or something along those lines. So therefore, the less time that this machine is running, ultimately, the more profit you're going to make from your pieces. So that is one of the biggest things to consider is ultimately that the more power you purchase upfront, the faster your jobs are going to be in getting them turned out. The other key difference, of course, is that this is a MOPA fiber laser. Now, if you're new to fiber lasers in general, there are a lot of variables on these machines that you can control in order to adjust the way that the laser outputs or impacts the material that it is burning. Things you may be familiar with, such as speed and power, but a fiber laser can also adjust the frequency. A MOPA fiber laser can also adjust the Q pulse. Now, to keep this as simple as possible, and the way I also understand it, the Q-pulse is the length of the burst of laser, how long ultimately it stays on every time it fires a shot, I suppose. The frequency is how many shots it can get into a second. So that is ultimately the simplest way to think about it. But in the general scheme of things, it is ultimately another setting or another cog that you can turn and tweak to control what is being output on the laser. This can be very complicated, it can also be very simple. And this is the thing I'm gonna cover off a little bit later on in the video. For 80% of the projects I use these machines for, I do not touch the cupels. But when you want to start getting into the fine detail of controlling color on things like stainless steel, that is really where it starts to come into its play. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's move on and talk about the big thing that I did on this machine that I didn't do on my original laser. Now, when I do a review, one of the things I'm looking at is how well they work straight out of the box without any tuning. Now, the only things I had to tweak on my original one was checking the focal length that it actually worked at and also reframing slightly just to make sure everything aligned perfectly. Now, a few months later, I know a lot more about fiber lasers than I did back then. And there are fine-tuned fine settings that you can adjust ultimately to really dial things in. And this is about the timings of when the laser fires, the rate that the mirrors move in relation to those laser firings. And you know we are talking like milliseconds here and the way that this all syncs up. There is a video, a link in the corner to uh, Laser Everything, which will talk you through all of those settings step-by-step step, and ultimately the one that I followed. Now, long story short of this video I was adamant I could dial these settings even better than the default ones and I spent three hours doing all of these tests analyzing them under a high-powered microscope trying to improve the settings and you know what I found actually the default settings are perfect and I don't mean close I mean perfect I ended up reverting straight back to the default settings after doing all of those tests because I couldn't get them any better it just kind of reaffirms what I said in my original video that these are pretty much good to go straight out of the box and yes you have all those fine-tuned settings but actually if you don't want to go down that rabbit hole you really don't have to because as I say these should be good to go straight away so let's go full circle and come back to talking about the advantages or disadvantages of a MOPA fiber laser now some people may be worried 
oh, this is another setting I don't want to have to worry about. It's a bit intimidating. Well, just remember, you can put it on a default setting to begin with, like 200, and go from there. Start doing your projects, don't worry about that setting, and build up your confidence. And then when you're ready, we can start to dive into the world of cupels. And oh my God, is it a rabbit hole. Now, these are just some of the sample cards that I've been doing, all stainless steel, material tests on them, front and back. There is another pile over there as well. I literally did test after test after test, just adjusting things like the frequency, the cupels, the power, the speed, even the focal distance. As I say, it really is a rabbit hole and you can almost go on forever just changing little settings to try and chase the different colors that you're after. Now, when we are talking about colors here, we're talking pinks, purples, vibrant blues, yellows, oranges, reds, even teals and greens on top of things like dark browns and blacks as well that can really be used to highlight and pop projects on stainless steel and titanium. So it kind of, it is an advantage that you can do these colors. You can produce some amazing effects with them, but there is no cheat sheet. There is no shortcut. You have to do the legwork and understand your laser, understand your material and chase these settings down to get the ones that work best for your machines. So brilliant feature. You can make some amazing projects with it, but you have to do the legwork to achieve it. Now, whilst I didn't just want to flood this video with lots of projects that I've done on the previous video, it is worth highlighting a few new ones that I've done since getting this machine. The Paris Olympics was a big event recently. It was only right to make myself a medal. I also did a really cool steampunk envelope opener. A wax seal with a lion's head engraved into it. Currently, I'm trying to engrave some metal playing cards. So I really have done a few cool projects with this, and I should give a shout out to Limitless Solutions. This, this is the website that I get all of my metal from, the coins, the medals, the knives, all of those type of things. Definitely go and check it out because the prices are really cheap for the quality of the metal. So as I said earlier, I didn't want to just rehash the same type of review showing all similar projects because essentially everything that can be done on the 30 watt can also be done on this machine and even faster as well. If you want to see the original review, the link will be up in the corner. This video is about showing you the differences with having the MOPA facility available and the type of your colors you can achieve. But ultimately, you're going to need to buy a few stainless steel plates in to get you started and get all of these tests done. I'll also try and put as many photographs as I can on the website of these um, different samples to hopefully get your settings in the ballpark. Now, if you are considering buying a fiber laser, I can definitely re recommend Commarker. I have had no faults whatsoever with either the 30 version or this version. And as I said earlier, they've just worked great straight out of the box. There will be some links in the description area below, which will always take you to the best available prices for these machines. So go and check them out. So that's everything for today's video. I hope you found it useful. As always, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if not done so already. Thank you very much for watching. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons and I'll see everybody on the next episode.